Hello everyone, it's that time of year again, Christmas time, and we have Advent of Code, which is one of my favorite things every year. The great guy at Advent of Code, he provides new tasks where you can try out new program languages, new tools or whatever. It's amazing. And this year I thought, let's do it with Harmony OS. So uh, I have... Uh, created a Harmony OS repository, which anyone can clone. Uh, and in this repository is scaffolding for uh, your repository. Uh, and here you can add your solutions. Just clone it, add your solutions and try out if you want to. And I'm going to be adding ArcTS solutions here. I'm working in a branch. So if you clone the main, uh, you can just work from that and uh, yeah, do what you want. But basically, uh, what you need to do is clone it, and then you have to input input files and your own solutions. I can show you here how it works. So <clears throat> this is the main page. Now I'm in uh, tab mode. Uh, of course, you need to download uh, Dev Echo Studio to make this work and run it in a previewer. Or you can also put it uh, to a device if you have a Harmony OS device. Uh, but it's a very simple project uh, in my index file here. I have uh, the layout, uh, so you can see here, this is just column layout, uh, my text here, this is this one. And then we have a flex uh, box, which I loop out 12 buttons. And each button takes me to a day page. So if I go to one here, it takes me to day one. It will take you to a day page, and it looks like this, uh, where you can call read day input, which is reading the file input, and then call the solution for port one or part two. And we have buttons here for that. And this is the layout basically, uh, how the button should look, font size, etc. And then when you run them, uh, they will call the solution uh, file, day one zero point ETS, for example. And here is your solution that you can implement. Uh, the reason I made this is uh, initially I had only one day page and different solution pages. But uh, if you have done advent of code before, you know that there might be some days where you want to maybe visualize something, not only uh, have a string return. So in that case, uh, this is conf uh, configurable. So I can change the UI for each day. Uh, so for example, if I want to display a plot or if I want to display something else or a maze or a grid or whatever, I can do that here. So it's more flexible to having it like this, but you can also have one day page uh, that calls the different solution pages, but then you're kind of locked up with one UI layout. So that's why it's done like this. And then uh, in raw file inputs, you can put your input strings or your input files, uh, right? And then we have an input reader, which reads the input, goes to the day page, and then in the solution, you implement your solution. That's it, very simple. Uh, so you can clone this from uh, this address. I'll put it in the link description below. and. Uh, you can start coding if you want to. I will at least. Uh, so let's go. So today is the second day. Uh, I already finished first and second here. Uh, I can show you a little bit my solution and how I was thinking. So uh, the first task or the first day is that the Santa elves, they're always up to no good. This time they're trying to get in, they're locked out. So they are basically trying to get into a vault which has a dial, like, um, you know, on a safe where you rotate it either left some, some uh, amount or to right some amount. And uh, what they want to know is how many times does it stop at zero after a full rotation? So this is a question. So basically, you can uh, treat, you have to split the input here. Uh, left means basically minus and right means plus. So basically, uh, I saw this as just uh, adding up, either taking minus or adding plus, and then use modulo to see if you're at zero or not. If you're at zero, you count how many times you're at zero, and then you uh, give that as an answer. And uh, in the B solution, uh, it's basically similar, but you need to count how many times you pass zero. So even though you might you say you wrote that it's 1000, you have, then you have to count that you passed it 
10 times. So each kind of rotation can uh, pass it multiple times, not you're only stopping at zero every time you pass zero. So if we look at my first solution here, the first solution is pretty simple. It's actually not that uh, good looking, uh, but if the start value, um, actually it's not the start value, but the start value starts at 50, and after I rotate it, if it's under uh, zero, uh, I do modulo and then add 100 to get over zero again. And if it's uh, to the right, uh, you just add the value and then uh, divide by, uh, and then do modulo zero. So, and then each time, if you end up at zero, you add that counter. That's basically it. And the second solution, it was actually much just trickier than I thought it was going to be. I thought I could do something similar. Uh, but in the end, I ended up doing something extremely kind of ugly, but it was easier to implement. But basically, I just took the input as a max bound uh, of a for loop. So if it's plus, I just increment that much. And then if it's minus, I just decrement that much. And then I see if I pass zero, if I go up, I just reset to uh, zero. If I go over 100, I just reset to zero. And if I go to minus one, I reset to 99. Uh, and then it's continuing uh, decrement and increment. And then you have to keep track on if you exactly finish at zero and then went left or right, because uh, there might be a, a case where uh, for example, you go up to zero and then next time you go minus one. So you can end up at 99. Uh, so that should only be counted once. So that was the tricky thing. But other than that, pretty straightforward. And uh, as you can see here, we can run it. So these are for my inputs. This will not work for your inputs, but uh, that's mine. And here, I want to change the solution a little bit because I want to basically do a display here later where I can see the knobs turning after each. So after each uh, rotation, I want to have a small sleep so I can see the, the knobs turning. So maybe, uh, I don't know. Some nice UI component I would probably try to add here so it looks cool. And uh, if we go to day two, uh, which was today, uh, in the first question, you basically have to say how many, this is pairs of, uh, we say keys or pairs of, uh, uh, what do you call, IDs. So. It's basically a range 11 to 22, then 95 to, and uh, you have to say if some uh, uh, numbers in these ranges are invalid. And basically in the first case, everything is invalid if it's a, a repeating number 11 and 22, for example. So if you can split the number in half and they are the same, then it, the, it's an uh, invalid ID. And what you have to do is, in, with all these ranges, you have to add them up, collect all the invalids, add them up, and then uh, you get the final value. So, uh, for the part one here, it was quite straightforward, actually. Uh, you can just split it. This is also very ugly, I think, because there's a lot of string conversion. Uh, but uh, uh, at least it works. And what I did was I just convert it to a string and then see if the first slice of the string is the same as the second slice. And I can ignore all the strings that have an un, uh, uh, uneven amount of letters. So. I don't have to check those because they cannot be the same. So uh, if mod two, they will be, yeah, there's basically this one else. I don't need this one, but then it's valid. And in the B, in the part two, uh, there is some more constraints. Uh, they can, as long as you're repeating series somewhere in the number, it's uh, not okay. It's also invalid. So this is a bit trickier. What you have to do is, uh, or you can probably do it in many ways, but what I did was that I took the device, I figured out the divisors of all of the length. So maybe if you have a, a number that is 10 numbers long, I figured out the divisors so in that case it will be one, two and five. Uh, those are the only ones you need to check because those are only the ones that can be repeating. You cannot repeat a three and a four. So that cuts down a lot of um, checks. So the first do is get the divisors and then for each divisor you check if it's repeating and uh, so basically you go like uh, you start with one and uh, then you go uh, is the first character same as the next one second third blah, blah, blah. if it fails you just break if it's the same and you get all the way then uh, you don't have to check for the other devices you can break again but if it's not you have to check the other devices uh, so next one will be for 10 for example would be two then you check two boom if it breaks if it's also it's okay if it's not okay break 
and then you check for five the last one is the first five and the last five is the same so i was a bit worried that this would be quite time consuming because this is usually the thing in advent of code that uh you can do a greedy algorithm but you might get punished um, but the first part runs pretty okay you see it was not that but the second part is a little bit slow uh but um see it it works but uh, it's not there's probably much more better ways of doing this i think some recursive algorithm or something but it works at least and i started today so i was uh, behind one day i had to do the scaffolding and i had to do this so um the first solutions here are not quite super nice but i think i will improve them that's the goal at least so that's that um if you want to join, if you want to try out Harmony OS coding, you can clone this repository and uh, start coding in ArcTS with DevEcho. I think um, a lot of the times it's kind of hard to figure out something to code if you want to learn. Advent of Code is an amazing uh, project or time because it's so nice to test out new things. You can test the coding in different languages, you can test whatever you want. So of course this Problems is very easy to solve if you use AI, but that's not the point. The point is for you to, or for me at least, to understand what's going on here and uh, learn more uh, and see how projects, for example, uh, how many OS projects are built up, how they work, how we can uh, send UI components between each other, how I can uh, talk with different functions and so on. So uh, if you like, clone it and try it yourself. And uh, there's also, uh, I created a leaderboard if you want to join. Uh, it's a private leaderboard, but it's only me. I will also put that uh, key in the description here below. Uh, so, let's see. Let's call Harmony OS this advent. Nice to see you. Merry Christmas. Happy advent. Bye-bye. Satya. -bye.